Okay, everybody, and welcome back to Learn with Minecraft Education. Uh, today, we are going to be looking at the topic of game design. To do this, we're going to create our own parkour game using this world template here that I've created. The link to the world file is in the description. However, I've also made an example parkour game uh, with some ideas for your students to get them inspired that I'll demonstrate in the second part of today's video. If you like what you see today, don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, but without any further ado, let's jump into this template world and have a look what's going on. So in front of us, we've got two buttons. And these are the controls for the start of the game. So we're going to start the timer here, uh, which pops up our timer in the right-hand side. It also flicks us to adventure mode, so we can't break any blocks or fly around, which is pretty useful for a parkour game. Uh, we've got the reset button over here, of course, which gets rid of the timer, sets it back to zero, and flips us into creative mode. Now, um, if we take a little look over here, we'll go through these double doors here very shortly. But for now, let's take a look in the kind of backstage area, I suppose. Now, these are all our command blocks. Make sure your students do not destroy these command blocks, please. They're very important. I'll do a tutorial on how to make the timer and stopwatch soon. Um, so do subscribe so you don't miss that next week. Uh, but for now, let's go through these double doors. And here you can see we have a large pit of lava at the bottom of this stone tower. And our job here is to design a path that goes up to the top of the tower, presenting us with a kind of interesting and varied set of challenges on the way to negotiate. So to very quickly demonstrate here, I'm going to start adding some stone blocks, moving upwards and around the edge of the tower. And um, I'm going to turn to the left here and start making my tower, my uh, blocks go, oh dear, falling in the lava, let's carry on. I'm going to make this little platform here that goes out um, across from one side of the tower to the other and put a few gaps in there um, just to make it difficult uh, for the player when they're jumping across. Right, let's go uh, back through, start the timer and uh, just show you how this game works. Right, so let's start the timer and uh, it's taking us into adventure mode through the doors. Um, so up the stairs here, around the edge, we've got a little tricky jump here, um, but we've made it across. And then uh, just to show you what happens, I'm gonna jump in the lava all my hearts are going away, and it gives me the option here to respawn, or it gives me the option to go back to the main menu. So if I respawn, should take me back to the reset timer zone. Um, however, you will notice it doesn't always do that. So as a precaution, around the outside of the game, we've got these teleportation stations um, that's going to take us back uh, to the to the start of the level. Okay, now we've also got this little yellow pathway around the side and it's just to help uh, the students if they if they are lost around the outside of the world uh, to get back to the middle. So we'll hit another teleportation station here and get back to the start. Okay, so uh, this world is for your students to use, uh, but like I said, sometimes they will want some inspiration. So I've created an, an example world uh, which is available for you to download that I think has a few interesting game design elements for you to think about when creating your own level. So let's shoot across to that level world file now and take a look, see what's going on. Okay, so here we are back in the example world now. And as you can see, nothing really much has changed so far. The time and reset button are still there. And if we go around the corner here, we've still got all of our command blocks and stuff. But what has changed is that if we go through these double doors behind us in a moment, we'll see we've got some new and interesting challenges to negotiate uh, that are going to look at game design. Okay, we'll look at that together. So as we head up the path, we've got a um, little wooden walkway. We've got some sticky pistons that are popping in and out of the wall that require us to um, jump with a little bit of precision. Uh, we've got a glass walkway here to make our way across and then some more sticky pistons up at the top. Now here we've got an iron door that's going to take us outside. And uh, what's quite interesting at this part is uh, another iron door, but this time the button also activates uh, some dispensers there shooting out arrows, making it a little bit difficult to move across the platforms. Now, as we make our way further around, uh, we've got more sticky pistons to jump across. And as we go around the corner here, we've got a pressure plate that tells us that we are halfway there. All right. Now, the next, uh, the next uh, obstacle is this glass walkway again, but this time it's also going upwards, which makes it that extra bit more difficult. And then this one's quite interesting. We need to select barrier blocks, and if I if I give myself some barrier blocks, 
um, you can see and select them in my hotbar, you can see where those barrier blocks are. Now this is called the leap of faith. Um, so the player needs to just trust that the blocks are there and walk across. And finally, we've got this kind of slime block trampoline thing uh, that we need to bounce across. And at the top here, we need to move forward and press the button when we get to the end of the level. Now your player of course needs a reward for completing the level. So we get a message saying you win. And uh, we also receive a diamond sword for our efforts. And the robot tells us we are the chosen one. How nice. So let's turn around and have a look at how some of these elements have been put together. Um, so down here, we've got a redstone clock. It's just putting out a pulse every second. And we've got a knot gate going into two uh, redstone repeaters with three ticks on each. And if you're not sure about knot gates, I do have a video on my channel about logic gates that you can take a look at, teach you all about them. And uh, it's just a matter of connecting those all up by redstone and, and some redstone repeaters up to the various pistons that we've got. You can see the pistons uh, around the outside of the wall there. So just uh, connecting those up. Now, let's go ahead and make our way round to these dispensers with the arrows inside. So we've got four dispensers full of arrows and we've got four um, kind of quite compact redstone clocks there um, connected up by redstone. But here's the, uh, here's the kind of tricky bit. What we've got is this empty block down here. Now when I press the button, we're going to um, fill that block down there with a redstone block and it powers all of these. And um, as you can see, they're ticking away. Uh, I've got each of those redstone repeaters on two ticks. And then the button at the other side will destroy this redstone block, which I can't do with a sword. There we go. And when the redstone block disappears, all of the, uh, all of the arrows stop shooting out. Okay. Um, so yeah, not too difficult. Uh, the next element of course is the uh, pressure plate. So let's go down and look at the coding for the pressure plate. Um, again, this is titles. So we've looked at titles in our archery range video a little bit, uh, but it's nice and simple. Oh, sorry. This is the redstone. Uh, this is the redstone block and this is to set to set that redstone block back to air. So we just put the coordinates in and it uh, gets those repeaters firing. Uh, but like I said, let's take a look at the pressure plate. So you stand on the pressure plate and it says you're halfway there, just like so. And um, the coding for that's very simple. It's just connected by redstone and it's title at a title, halfway there. And it's just a little uh, bit of encouragement to the player, I guess, that they're on, on the right track. So let's go back out to the start. I am sure uh, that you want to, uh, see, oh dear, can't get through these doors. Uh, and, and as before, the outside of the level is the same. Okay. So, uh, we've got our teleportation stations. And, uh, if we do fall off the, off any of the outside parts of the level, we can teleport ourselves back to the start. Right. So let's, uh, let's give this a go. I'm sure you want to see me try it out. So around the corner here, up the steps and, um, we're going to negotiate our first sticky piston here. Over we go. Okay. Uh, well, didn't do particularly well there, uh, but I'm sure you guys can do better. So, uh, if you want to download this world, ah, this is the the respawn problem that we're dealing with here. So the respawn point should be right outside, um, right outside that reset button. It is not um, very consistent in the way that it puts you back. So uh, the level has been designed in a way that you can always get back to the reset timer. Um, but um, it's just a little work around there. So of course, we want to make sure that we are putting our efforts into downloading these worlds. And if you want to download both worlds, that's fine. And uh, if you want to tell me how quickly you were able to complete uh, my parkour level, that's fine. Hey, if you want to join me on social media on the on the Facebook group or on Twitter, send me your worlds and um, I'll have a go at trying to complete them. As you've seen, I'm not particularly great. Uh, but guys, do subscribe to the channel to see more videos like this, and I will see you all next time. Have a good one.